when you have to deal with knowledgeable youngsters, you need to be equipped with it. Otherwise, they will not respect you. And respect you can't command. Respect you have to earn. When I said my core values, that remains constant. That is integrity, accountability, empathy, then adaptability and excellence. Hello and welcome everyone. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Arun Bhattacharya, a certified independent director with over 45 years of driving excellence and profitable growth in the IT industry. His remarkable corporate journey includes leading high-performing teams, crafting winning sales strategies and mentoring future leaders at Acer India. An MBA graduate from the prestigious Indian Institute of Management, Calcutta, his impactful guidance continues to shape the next generation of industry professionals. In addition, he co-founded the South Point 66 Social Welfare Society, supporting the grassroots NGOs and promoting health awareness, embodying his dedication to community empowerment and service excellence. Join us as we delve into this remarkable journey of leadership, mentorship, and community service. Welcome, sir, and thank you so much for accepting our invite to share your journey with us. Thank you so much, Ramrata. It's a pleasure being here with you. So, so let me start with a very basic question. <clears throat> Would like to take us back on how your journey in the IT and sales industry began. What inspired you to pursue this career? And how has the industry evolved since your early days when you joined? That's a very interesting topic indeed. Somehow, from the young days of my life, I was very keen in taking a sales profession. Though sales was, in our days, those days, it was never regarded as a very nice profession. Some of the other people had a very wrong notion about sales. But being what I am, I decided that that is the only line I'll take it forward. Actually, sales basically ignites my passion for connecting with people. And that is the most important drive that I have to take this sales as a profession. Basically, it helps building very meaningful relationship that lasts. Embrace challenges, the too many challenges on and off. And we need to face it not only face it, we need to accept that challenge, overcome that challenge and move forward in life. And while facing those challenges, you get to uncover solutions which are innovative, which will actually make meaningful solutions for any problems that one faces. Helps you grow alongside like-minded people that we have. Basically, you thrive with so much challenges and unseen issues coming in between. You thrive in dynamic landscape of possibilities. All these and also the fact that it makes a lasting impact that echoes beyond transactions. It's not only mere transactions that we get into it. And that is the most important part of sales career. As I look back on my journey in sales, I'm literally stuck by how dramatically the landscape has changed today. Earlier, when I started my career, it was a product selling. Today, it's just not a product selling. The better you understand their issues, their problems, and you help them with the proper solutions, that is where the sales takes place. You may have the best of the product, but you have not understood their problem. It will not be accepted. See, I joined IT in the year 1983. And as most of us in IT industry, I also joined HCL industry, which was a pioneer in IT those days, as far as India is concerned. 
it was a fabulous experience all through step by step understanding it at initial days it, it was a product selling how to go through the institution selling i had no idea of institution selling and what it needs to actually uncover their requirement and position your product there collaborating with manufacturing client to implement a tailored hardware that is also extremely important because not necessarily any and every hardware will suit their requirement there is a specific requirement and we need to meet that specific requirement with the hardware that we are planning to position there designing basically an it infrastructure what they need and why they need is very important it can be for healthcare it can be for it requirement it can be for manufacturing it can be for sales solutions basically ensuring seamless data management and simultaneously helping them proper solution oriented delivery that is what makes sales so very interesting believe me there are 10 salesman going to the same customer and it's not that they will select all the 10 guys to identify so what interests them to me what interests them is the guy who is able to communicate well offer them a proper solution understand their problem and that is where the relationship builds up these experiences have actually taught me the value of empathy creative problem solving and innovative thinking in driving meaningful client solutions while say in stating all this i would must say that nothing was easy nothing was given to you on a platter you will falter and how you overcome from there onwards that makes the difference i am actually extremely proud how this industry has evolved today as i said earlier my career has grown alongside it the journey has been marked by continuous learning adaptation and growth every step there's new learning my leaders were there to guide me fortunate enough i got extremely good leaders who were understanding despite quite often failing to deliver the proper solution i was guided and not criticized but where i went wrong and how i can improve further and those were the days i realized how a mentor can help you those days i never understood the word mentor frankly speaking but i understood the leader and how he had been guiding few of us to ensure that we take the right path and basically my passion remains strong for the critical role of sales even today even after retirement formal retirement i retired long time back but formal retirement i am still hungry and i am mentally alert i am still eager to work and contribute if i can for development of others in the field of sales and marketing i am literally filled with sense of accomplishment and excitement for what's yet to come let that be a surprise but i'm sure something will come to me where i can contribute sir you were not from it background but yes. you joined an it company how difficult it was for you to explain the products of it to any customer and how you managed to do it so well in your field i don't know whether i did so well but yes i put in all my best efforts and got recognized of course see as i said it is a new technology which was coming up those days and anything new attracted me that was the first point of attraction for me and basically i had some core values which 
continuously guided me for my both personal as well as professional career. Core values are basically, what is core value? Deeply held belief, which basically from my childhood days, from my parents that came in. And I'm really, really grateful to my parents that I could imbibe such values in life. And what are the core values that I'm referring? Nothing's very difficult, but few basic things which I personally believe each individual must have it. That is integrity, accountability, empathy, adaptability, and excellence. These few values have driven me all through my life, even till today. Somehow, without these values, I find it extremely difficult to adapt or carry on further be it individual, be an organization, wherever it is. That is one point where I'm pretty rigid in my thoughts, if, if you are, uh, say so. But yes, that's how I am. And coming back to your question of IT, I think that is what you wanted to know. IT fascinated me. As I said, it's a new technology. And without the technology, we have seen how difficult it is to formulate anything new, any, now we call it SOP or whatever we may call it, earlier days we never knew those. It is so difficult to prepare all those things and guide any individual. But with the help of IT, and now of course, further development, AI has come in. So, an industry is lapping onto AI today, practically. So that is what interested me and keep my interest going even today. Anything new, I feel attracted. It doesn't give me a feeling of, hey, it's new. Why take the trouble? The other way around for me, I feel it's a wonderful opportunity to look at something new now. So you mentored ASER India for a long time. Yes, ASER India I joined back after my retirement, formal retirement, yes. Okay. And you guided many professionals over there. So yeah. during that professional period, what unique insights did you bring to your mentorship role? And how did you help these professionals develop the skills for success in today's competitive landscape? That's something very interesting because I remember when I retired, the existing MD at that time knew me and he called me a I know you are retiring, but are you serious about retirement? I said, it's too early for me to retire. So that's how we met and I was a part of Acer India's growth in India. Acer India, what it is today, is a fantastic achievement. Thanks to the existing current president come MD, Mr. Harish Kohli, who has taken Acer India to a different height altogether. When I joined, I remember I asked one specific question. I have no issues in joining ASER. But today's youngsters, I have no idea how they will accept a senior guy like me. The answer what I got from them is knowing you, I don't think that should be a problem. I said, wonderful. If that is the feeling, I have no issue. And believe me, it was a team which actually shown through rather than me doing anything there. The responsibility that was initially entrusted to me was because Western Zone for any organization in the industry, in any industry, is the prime segment, West Zone, for the business purpose. And somehow or the other, ASR was not doing too well in the Western Zone. So they felt that maybe my experience and guidance can help there. So that's how I was entrusted with the responsibility of West and I took it up very seriously. Team was there, but recruited some new guys because we needed people there. And we started basically focusing into all segments of activity to ensure SS existed there. 
it's a product of yours, but it's a meeting the organizations, except for selective organizations where we were concentrating in earlier days. We started spreading our wings into all type of events, private, corporate, SMEs, retail, everything. And opening new counters for retail showrooms so that the visibility increases. And fortunately, the team was with me. We are in sync totally, all of us together, and got a huge backing from headquarter. And we proved that, yes, West for Acer is alive. And we really shown wonderful results and were awarded the best region of Acer All India. When Western Zone was practically not doing anything at those days. So that was a wonderful feeling and satisfaction. And the team, of course, got tremendously motivated. So it's not only Bombay, of course, Bombay mattered the most, but West Zone covered MP, Gujarat, the entire belt. And all the other locations started performing as well. And the spread was visible, not only in the retail, but also in the government sector, banking sector, education sector. And we grew from there. Then, of course, I was asked to move into the headquarter in Bangalore. And I was interested along with Western Zone, the South Zone also in the Kathleen. I had bits of South Zone, sometime North Zone, sometime East Zone, West remaining the constant factor. And then, to my satisfaction, they did an excellent job across the board. And then I was asked for something which I was not even prepared to look after the customer support for the consumer divisions. I said, I have never been into the support. I don't have any technical knowledge as such. I said, that should not be a barrier. It's not necessary only screwdriver technology. There are a lot many things in customer support, which I agree. And I took over the challenge and continued with them till 2015, looking after all India customer support for the consumer division. Then I finally moved into the complete as a mentor. I said, direct selling or support is now becoming a little too much for me. So if it is better, I get a little different profile now at this age of mine. So I was as an advisor, come mentor for ASA team. Then finally, because of family requirement, I decided to move into Kolkata, which ASA gladly accepted. And then I moved into Kolkata. And as in West, the first year of operation in Kolkata was again a grand success. Eastern Zone got the West Regional Award in their annual conference. That was a very happy moment for me. I would have possibly continued, but because of the pandemic, things went a little heavier, and I decided to move back, take a little back seat. And then, of course, I still continue doing something or the other. One is that NGO, which I share. And then I do take some online courses once in a while as a freelancer for some organizations. That's how I keep myself busy. And coming back to Kolkata, best thing that happened is I could get in touch with quite a few of my school batchmates. I passed out higher secondary from South Point School in 1966. Fortunately, those days we didn't have too many sections and too many students. We had three sections and 20, 22 students in each section. So managed to get around 40, 42 people, mostly in Calcutta, few were in Bombay, Bangalore, and one or two abroad. So we rejoined hands and we formed a WhatsApp group. And then one fine day, we decided that why not time for us to give back to the society. And that's how the concept of giving back to society and the concept of South Point 66 Social Welfare Society took birth. And then we decided that we will not just raise fund and give it to some well-established NGOs because we have no clue where the fund goes. 
We researched in Calcutta and found out small, small organizations, but extremely needy organizations. And that's how we identified around 10 out of which eight we support. We decided to support in eight. And for the last seven years, it's going on extremely well. We developed it well, not only our own contribution, we start getting donations from across. We have formed a portal. Through portal itself, we collected quite a huge amount direct for the beneficiaries. That's how the life is as of now. So nice. After hearing this part, sir, I would say two things. One, Acer got the diamond and they didn't let the diamond go. And since you knew the inside outside of Acer, so you were there and you did extremely well over there. You guided the team. You helped in customer service. You helped in everything. Like mm -hmm. from in and out, you got the knowledge of everything and you shared your expertise everywhere. That was so mm -hmm. nice of Acer and so nice of you that you were with them. Yes, it was so, extremely sir, nice of Acer. Yes. So, sir, with decades of experience in team building and client management, how has your understanding for leadership evolved? What new dimension of leadership do you think that today's professional should embrace? Like, we don't find the professionals like you. What qualities you have? Like, you have been continuously working with Acer for such a long time. And when we see some people, like, for one year, they are working this company, then very other year, they switch to another company. What kind of suggestion you will share with the professionals today? Glad that you raised these questions. See, first thing, I personally feel one must enjoy the job, whatever he or she is doing. Whatever field it may be. Not necessarily it has to be sales. But if I don't enjoy, I'll certainly not give my full commitment to it. I'll take it as a 9 to 5 job. Over. That's the end of it. And believe me, if you have to do well, if you have to perform well, if you have to carry your team with you, it's not 9 to 5. I'm not saying you need to continue indefinitely like this. But there are a lot of things which makes a team. Those days are gone that you dictate, you command and something will come. Sorry, it's no more valid today. People are aware. It's available through internet. So when you have to deal with knowledgeable youngsters, you need to be equipped with it. Otherwise, they will not respect you. And respect you can't command. Respect you have to earn. So for all youngsters, my few advices are, of course, when I said my core values, that remains constant. That is integrity, accountability, empathy, that adaptability and excellence. Hunger for excellence has to be there. I have seen many, many places. When we do a project and someone is interested on doing certain job, it's not that small bit of work is his or her responsibility. He completes that specific activity, passes on to someone else. He or she must also ensure that that gentleman is also doing his bit and passing it on to others. It's a cycle. It's a continuous chain. But quite a few of us, I move my paper from my table I've done my job. It doesn't happen that way. And that is where guy has to be extremely sincere, diligent, conscious about the outcome of what he is supposed to do. If I fail, I can't say that this guy didn't do his job well, hence I didn't perform. Certainly not acceptable. I have to ensure that that guy performs along with me. Whatever needs to be done, he is a team man. These are the few things which I personally feel is extremely important for any youngsters to understand. And once you imbibe those qualities, I think it automatically grows on you. And then you drive it. Because you can't be a leader and sit on a table and say, do this, do that. Why it has not happened? It's not possible.
that is the way I have dealt all my life. Even today, I deal the same way. And I have found a tremendous response from anywhere that I have worked. Very true, sir. I think these core principles, or I can say these suggestions, a new generation should understand. And even it's both ways. It's not only an employee should be very great. There's always a manager or a leader who is working with him, Absolutely. who is a team head, who is a team leader. So it's also the team leader's responsibility Absolutely. to take care of that employee. 100%. And see, we also learn as a team leader, we learn from youngsters. Yes. Not and necessarily every, we know everything under yes. the sun. Every employee has something different. Absolutely. Yes, Each one of us have something to give. Yes. Acknowledge that, accept it, move forward. True. I'm very glad about Acer, but would you like to share some core principles that a company must follow to build a strong relationship with employees or with customer relationship in today's digital world? Because when you started with IT company, that yes. time IT was not too much. IT but was now, not known. <laughs> yeah, but now everywhere is IT. Starting with our hand to morning routine to end of the day. Everywhere is IT. So what do you suggest to the companies? See, a uh, few things I feel throughout my leadership journey that I have gone through. I have undergone a transformative change, complete transformative change. And each stage, I also grow as an individual. I cannot be stagnant and guiding others to grow. It doesn't happen. So basically, as an organization, I personally feel the leader of the organization, who is at the helm of the organization, also should be extremely sensitive about the organizational growth. Must maintain a very open communication. I can't say something to A and the other thing to B. And that is where the confusion starts. That is where the team bonding gets affected. Failure will happen. All of us fail. But if we fail and criticize that, that doesn't help me in learning. What I personally feel, fine, it has happened, mistake does happen. Let us sit together and understand how we could have done it better. Both of us have some ideas on that and then take those and move ahead. Not everywhere we have that culture. Number two, appraisal today, more of a, I like someone, he or she is okay with it. But appraisal is a very constructive feedback to the employee. Good, bad, ugly, we must understand. And we must also allow the person concerned whom are appraising to say his viewpoint. Where are his blockages? Understand if we can do something together on that. It's a huge activity. But I personally feel adaptability, open communication, Mentorship at each level, which is necessary. Training, because training is another aspect of organization, which in India, people don't look at very positively. As what I have heard saying, if I give training and he or she leaves, what happens? There is no compulsion that he gives it in writing to you. You give me a training, I'll stick to you. That's it. A risk element will always be there in any organization. But if the culture, if the teammanship is there in an organization, if the growth gets recognized, if the performance gets recognized, if criticism gets accepted and different line of course, which is better for all, is taken forward, very few normally leaves. Acer is one organization, believe me, Majority of the people are working there for 15, 16, 20 years. Because the culture is such. It's complete open. Communications are heard, not only by individual seniors, but by the management. Wherever possible, actions are taken. Performance are acknowledged. 
awards are given, recognized, people feel happy. And I'm glad to inform you that the last five consecutive years, SR has been given as the best employee as an organization. Each one in an organization needs to really contribute to make the organization grow. Mm. By blaming management doesn't help. Similarly, management blaming the team doesn't help. It's together we build a team. It's together we grow and make the company Absolutely. grow. And Absolutely. the company, everyone grows. Absolutely. So, sir, after retiring, you continued making a significant impact around you with your schoolmates meeting in Kolkata and starting an NGO. So how does your work with NGO and initiative you started, like listen to your body, connect with your core values and how do you see it influencing the community? What was the reason behind this NGO? You told me a little bit about this NGO, but I want to know a little wider version. Okay. Like what was all about this listen to your body connect? This happened in 2017. Most of the members, we met together for a lunch gathering. And in that lunch gathering, few of us raised the topic of giving back to the society. Now that we have reached a certain level in life, why not think something constructively to give back to the society? That's how the entire concept started. Then we debated amongst ourselves. One is we'll not give money to the big names. So then what? We decided that all of us will find some time and spend on a little bit of research, going to the place and finding out the need of those organizations. So we, different, different members, we started looking around. We found out 10 out of which we decided to support eight. That eight comprises of old age home, Balwadi Krish, Orphanage Home, Mentally Retarded Spastic Society, Society for the Blind, Orthopedically and Mentally Challenged People, and two coaching schools, basically for slum children. So, few principles we decided that, okay, we have all retired from private companies, so majority of us don't have any pension or anything. It's the savings that we have, but with the way inflations are growing, savings can't take you much. So naturally, we didn't have too much of money to contribute. We contributed whatever each one of us, there was no compulsion. And we said, we'll not force anyone to join this activity. It has to come from within. Otherwise, it will not succeed. So out of 42 people, 26 agreed to join. And today, those 26 are still with us together. Seven long years. We contribute and every month, two or three of those eight, nine benefits that we have, we support them. We don't give cash. We have made it very clear we will not give cash. So we approach them, they give us whatever they need. It can be medicine, it can be groceries, it can be dresses, it can be books for studies, whatever they need. We buy them, get it procured, get it delivered. But then two, three years down the line, we realize, fine, we're doing something. It is huge satisfaction. But how can we improve this further? So we decided we'll have a website to form a portal, but we didn't have money to invest to get a third party. So one of our friends who stays in Bombay, he came forward to help us in that and a few of us decided to help him in terms of content building. That's how we launched our website, which is South Point 66 Social Welfare Society. Once we launched the website, we started spreading because we can't invest in promoting those. So all of us, we started sharing with our friends, families, India, abroad, everywhere. And last four years, believe me, we have been able to generate 24 lakh for these beneficiaries. 
And that fund, we don't take it in our bank account. Because government of India has too much restrictions on these. Too many communications. At our age, it's very difficult to monitor that way. So whichever beneficiaries the donors decide to support, we share their bank account and they send it to them directly. And we ensure if it is a lump sum amount, they would submit a utilization report to the donors. So that donors know that the fund is properly utilized. We try to be as transparent as possible. While doing so, Praveen, our friend, because quite a few of our friends at 75, 76 are not carrying good health. We lost seven of our batchmates already. And frankly, we don't know much till it hits you, the medical part of it. And quite a few of us don't even have our insurance as well. So we decided that this listen to your body can be a good concept. Initially, we had a lot of hassles. Our own people were not, because people don't like to listen to health-related issues too much. That's a point noted. But still, few of us are very keen and we decided to go ahead with it. And similarly, we shared our details with various friend circles, families. And slowly, we have once a month, we have a lot of doctor friends through contacts. So we get doctors and they are very happy to talk on the session. We have a Zoom link, one hour session and a half hour Q&A. 6.30 to 8, once a month in Sunday. We do it. Currently, I won't say it's a hugely popular show, but on an average, around 30, 40 participants join as of now. With word of mouth, I'm sure this will slowly gain popularity. And we find it extremely helpful because doctors, when they speak, they don't speak on their typical medical languages. They give a lot of inputs on healthy lifestyle what to eat, what not to eat, on medications, on where you need to be careful, which is very important tips at our age. This is how I think we are going on and people are still very happy and contributing their bit. Some are, of course, slowly getting little, taking a back seat. But that's by, bound to happen. At our age, that's bound to happen. Not all are very energetic. You can't expect that. Hopefully, things will continue as long as we stay alive. <laughs> After that, it's a million dollar question. What happens? So we have started looking at that option as well because we need to find someone to take charge of this slowly and steadily from our hand so that it doesn't die its natural death. Because then it will be bad for those beneficiaries who have almost become dependent on our support. True. At this age, you all, 26 members, all of you are doing such a good thing and helping the slums and the other needy people, whoever needs you. Because at this age, people are automatically dependent on others. But you are making others independent and you are helping others. This is such a great initiative by you all. And may God bless you with lots of... Thank you so years. much, Amrita. Thank you so much. Whatever little we can do, we are still trying to do it. And hopefully we'll do it till it the last. definitely grow and definitely with more people getting aware of this initiative and aware of this NGO, people will come forward to help and everything will grow. Definitely. Will. Because everything which comes for a good cause, it grows. Yes. I also believe in that, definitely. So, sir, during your corporate career, you were very busy doing your executive MBA with your job, with your 9 to 5 job and then doing your MBA and studying till 9 o'clock. How difficult was it? It was definitely difficult, but how you used to unwin during that time? Because just doing job and working and working, nobody gets happy. There should always be something which makes a person relax or unwind himself or herself and there should be some hobbies if not then reading also helps and even if a person has a passion to work then there is something which helps them grow and make their mind calm and happy what was your thing 
absolutely i agree with you i'm i'm little fortunate in that way because one i was great follower of sports huge even today during the world cup soccer every fourth year me and my wife we watch all the matches at night till 3 o'clock till 4 o'clock have coffee together and i have a group where i write commentary during the match and share in that with them so sports have been one of the most important factor in my life which have kept me going apart from that again i'm very very fortunate to have fantastic friends circle even today i personally feel it's a very rare thing but i'm fortunate enough to have friends who really feel for each other in this group of school batchmates we have also evolved one more thing that we must celebrate milestone dates of each one's career 75th birthday 50th anniversary 80th birthday and we do celebrate on that i was youngest in the family i was pretty pampered by my brothers and my parents and uh, fortunate to have friends as i said sports used to carry through so despite all these hassles i won't say hassle yes at times it looks like hassles but as i said earlier i enjoyed whatever i did yeah. right and that is what possibly carried me through yes Because and whenever i used to get some time which i definitely i was not a continuous book reader i am not like that and i was never a great student as well <laughs> so i believed in sports i used to read books of course i still read books i watch movies earlier both me and my wife were extremely fond of going to the theater hall and watching movies when i was in asia three senior of us we used to share each others first day first show who is going today <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we still do that but it has reduced nowadays because of tv things have changed to a certain extent but all these i think have kept me quite balanced as a matter of fact all my life in corporate world i have never worked beyond 6:30 in the evening exceptions leave aside that i can stay whole night also after coming home those days in earlier days we didn't have phone or anything but with acer and it world the phones were available i am available but beyond 6:30 i had not been in office i was very clear that everyone knew about i tell all my peers and juniors don't stay back in the office because you have a family devote some time with the family but unfortunately youngsters today air condition room free laptop do anything that you can after 6:30 productive work is not even 10% hmm. but they still hang on 8:30 9 o'clock and come back oh i'm so tired so i don't believe in that concept i have never believed possibly that has kept me the way i am i think that's the best concept because if you will work from 9 to 5:36 i think most of your work will be finished by absolutely. that absolutely constructive and work some, unless and until some emergency comes that is different completely different because anyway you are working for your family and if you are not able to give time to your family that doesn't make sense for you to work i agree fully and that has kept me going and i'm fortunate i have fabulous wife to support me So, extremely good friend circle who are understanding and coming back to kolkata our family most of the family members are in kolkata across the globe also but we have formed a family group both of her side as well as my side and we do lot of activities in the family side also That's i have my professional group i have my school group i have my college group so it keeps me occupied and busy that's nice sir and that is the reason you are still active with everything <laughs> and that's so great to see so Thank one last so question much. at yeah. this age also you did independent director post right yes 
what was the reason behind that what was your thought that why you wanted to do that see there is no age for learning i believe in that true very and true and today unfortunately our education system is such it's almost theory so that's why the skill set matching is a huge problem in india when you look for a job those days are gone when we have a degree the first entry takes place but today with it and ai coming in skills are becoming important so i felt why not learn something new which may help though i knew my age may be a factor because unfortunately in india president can be 80 year old but corporate people can be 80 year old <laughs> so the basic concept of learning something new drove me into the course and as i said earlier it's a wonderful experience i had learning not from the course but also from the course batchmates most of them were much younger to me but a lovely thing to hear them understand something and pick up thread from there as long as you have this hunger believe me life is fantastic the day i realized that hunger is gone i think the end is coming soon <laughs> very true sir thank you so much for sharing all these things and giving us your thoughtful insights about your life journey about your experiences and about your wonderful ngo initiative i just love this part and would love to know more about this by going through your website and other stuffs thank we'll you i will share that i'll thank share you. the portal go through that sure. you will get to know sure sir sure so thank you so much sir thank you. Thank you It so much. It was great having you with us. My pleasure too. Wonderful meeting you. Thank you, Namrata. Thank you, sir. Bye bye.